rare earths, specifically you know, dimium and praseodymium, we know that uh, the production of those materials have to uh, double in the next 10 years in order to be able to um, accommodate the, the demand for neodymium and praseodymium for electric vehicles only. Welcome to our viewers tuning into SA TV today. I'm very pleased to be joined by Defence Metals today, a North American mineral exploration company focused on the development of the rare earths for trader deposit. Um, so I'm very pleased to welcome Louisa Moreno, President and Director of Defence Metals. Thank you very much for joining us today, Louisa. Thank you, Alice. Thank you for having me. No problem. Um, I know I know it's been a been a few months since you last spoke with us here at the SA. So um, perhaps to kick us off, you could you could start by giving us a, a bit of an overview on on where the project is at the moment and, and any recent updates. Sure. Um, so we are uh, very pleased with the progress we have had. Um, so we have put out a number of drilling results that were very well received, very positive, relatively high grades at uh, long intersections. All of that information has been used uh, for a new updated resource that's going to go towards the, the pre-feasibility study. We have also successfully completed um, the pilot plant, and um, we now uh, affirming up the flow sheet that is going to be used in the pre-feasibility study. We are happy with the progress. In the next um, couple of months, we will be able to uh, start making more uh, specific estimates uh, around um, CAPEX, OPEX, to be able to then uh, advance uh, the pre-feasibility and complete it sometime in the first half of next year. Great. Um, and I think you, you had some recent uh, metallurgical test results as well. Did you, did you want to talk more about yes. those? No, essentially uh, the MET results that we put out were all associated to the, the pilot plant. And so we were able to prove that um, we are able to produce the very important mineral concentrate that makes rare earth projects more economic. We were able to show that we can produce the mineral concentrate more than 40%, which is similar to Linus and other producers around the world. And while keeping a relatively high uh, recovery rate. So that is critical for, for rare earth. All uh, hard rock rare earth producers today have that initial step of producing a high grade mineral concentrate at, uh, at high recovery rates. And we, we were able to prove that at the lab level, uh, at smaller scale, and now uh, at the much higher scale, uh, using different lithologies and different grades as low as 1.3, 1.4, and uh, seeing upgrades from 10 times to more than 10 times. Uh, so it's, it's really exciting. Great, thank you. Um, and you know, maybe we could we could kind of take a bit of a step back and and, and look at look at some of the, the wider context around around rare earths and and where prices are at the moment. Uh, you know, there's, there's been a recent announcement from from China around export restrictions of, of gallium and germanium. So, you know, what what does that mean for for rare earths more broadly and and also for for your project? Right. Yes. So China has. Um impose uh, export restrictions for gallium and, and germanium. So we do have small concentrations of gallium as well, but what our focus is definitely rare earth. But the meaning of, of all of this geopolitical conflict between the West and, and China, what does it mean is that China will not hesitate to put um, export restrictions on critical materials. So they're doing that now to gallium and germanium because of extra export restrictions uh, that China uh, has uh, received uh, coming from Netherlands and US. Uh, and um, they essentially, germanium and, 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 and gallium are used for semiconductors in the semiconductor uh, industry. And when they receive um, when they were happy with uh, the policies out of the US, they impose those export restrictions. So what that means for rare earth is that we might, we might see similar restrictions as well uh, whenever China is not happy with uh, geopolitical uh, policies that, uh, they may, uh, that may be imposed uh, against them. Uh, so that puts a much higher pressure 
uh, on, on what we're doing. We always emphasize um, the applications of rare earth for electric vehicles and for wind turbines, and more so applications in the green space. So there's a broad application. And whenever China feels that the policies, whenever in whichever sector it's not favorable to them, um, they are likely to put export restrictions on the critical materials, and rare earth is likely to receive that. Yeah, and 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 kind of, you know, when taking a look at pricing at the moment, where where is where is pricing for for rare earths, and you know, kind of, you know, what's that looking like, and what what are you predicting? Right. So because China produces about sixty plus percent of total rare earth, but they refine more than 85%. So they essentially control the supply chain. And they're also major consumers of rare earth. So in, in that sense, they, they have a great deal of, of control over uh, rare earth prices, uh, supply and demand as well. And um, until we are able to um, be a bit more uh, independent from China, uh, you know, um, as far as rare earth is concerned, uh, we will continue to be um, affected uh, a great deal uh, by the, the markets in China and by the producers in China. And right now, prices are, are down, but the key demand metrics uh, for the future have not changed. So essentially, uh, rare earth, specifically new dimium and presidimium, we know that uh, the production of those materials have to uh, double in the next 10 years in order to be able to um, accommodate the, the demand for neodymium and presidimium for electric vehicles only. You know, uh, you know, there's so many other applications. So that has not changed. And as supply and demand becomes more tight, we are likely to see a significant and, and likely permanent increase in, in prices of those magnet materials. Great, thanks. Um, something else that, you know, that's, that's kind of obviously on, on the horizon, um, Arafura Rare Earths have, have recently announced some possible funding from Canada. So, you know, what does that mean for your project? Will you be receiving any funding from the government or is that, you know, that's something that's kind of within your plans? Yes, no, that's very positive. It shows uh, the intention of the Canadian government to fund uh, rare earth projects. And uh, so there are obviously conditions um, to that funding. It's, uh, it's just a letter of intent at this point, but it's a, a very strong intent to fund uh, rare earth projects. With Wachi, the project, we're not as advanced as Arafura's Nolan's project, but we feel that as we advance forward, we will certainly um, be, uh, have uh, that, that support as well from, from, the, from, the, Canadian, from the Canadian government. But um, as, I, as I said, there is, uh, there is need for um, the supply of, of, of rare earth. Uh, of neodymium and presidimium uh, specifically for uh, for electric vehicles, and um, and it would be positive if our work could uh, deliver that in the short term, and it will be great uh, when we uh, at Defense Metals are able to put the Wachita project uh, in production and be able to supply rare earths as well to the North American uh, supply chain and as well as other markets around the world. Excellent. And, and I understand you have actually just, just raised some, some capital uh, from, a, from a major resource fund. So, um, you know, could you tell us a bit about your, your financial position at the moment and, and this, this new investment? Right, right. So we, we raised about 12.5 million um, and um, half of that roughly was from the Resource Capital Fund. And that was a, a huge endorsement because it's a well-known uh, fund in the resource space. We spent uh, several months doing due diligence. Uh, they visit our uh, deposit and uh, they engaged with our technical team over several weeks. Um, and, uh, and they... Um, you know, decided that uh, Wachita is is worth investing, and so that is a significant validation from a fund that uh, has invested in the Mountain Pass project, which is now owned by MP Materials and another uh, critical deposits for lithium and other critical materials uh, successfully. So we we believe that they want to be very successful with this investment in defense metals as well. So that's uh, that's very positive for us. 
thank you so much for, for joining us today, Louise. It's been really great to chat to you. And yeah, we look forward to, to welcoming you back again soon. Thank you for having me. <laughs>